This test worked out awesome. I think I found a really good compromise for a wood stove water heater between the coil being inside the flue, which comes with a lot of disadvantages, and then the coil being wrapped around outside the flue, which is far less efficient. Hey everyone, today I've got another wood stove water heating coil test video for you. And this one is gonna focus on the design with the coil wrapped around the flue pipe. I'm gonna test four variations of this design and take a bunch of temperature readings along the way so that at the end I can compare and contrast the different styles. The first three variations were mentioned a ton by you guys in the comments, so I wanted to make sure to test all three of those. And then the fourth variation I've never seen done before. To my knowledge, it has never been tried. So I'm gonna do that one also, and I think that one is gonna be really cool. This is the same amount of copper that I used in the previous test videos that I'll link below, but the difference this time is that the coil is outside the flue pipe instead of inside the flue pipe. What I think is going to happen with this design is that there's going to be a less efficient heat transfer. The coil is no longer in the flue gases, so it's going to be a lot less hot, and I think it'll lead to far less heat transferred to the actual water. But the pros of this version is that with it being on the outside, it's no longer condensing creosote on the outside, which is both a fire hazard and that it will reduce efficiency of the heat transfer over time as the creosote cakes on. The copper is also gonna be in contact with the ceramic coating on the outside, so there's no longer gonna be any galvanic corrosion between the copper and the steel. And overall, it's just a much simpler, cleaner build. So I'll just jump right in and get going with the first one right now. Remember, likes and subscribes really help the channel. Throw your comments down below. I'd love to hear more ideas. How can we make this better? What else should I test? And if you wanna help us directly to keep the content coming, you can do that over on Patreon. All right, let's jump in. The first thing I need to do is get the copper pipe full of water and freezing. The last video where I made a copper coil, a lot of people mentioned using sand instead. But when you look at this, imagine the practicality of actually getting sand in all of these rings. Here, I just need to dunk it in the water. And then getting all the sand out once the coil is tightly wound seems like a nightmare. But with this, you just have to wait. You just let it melt and let the water drain out and you're done. Once I'm certain I've got all the air out of the copper tubing, I'll zip tie the coil together, bend the two end tails pointing up so no water can spill out, and I'll go stick that in the freezer. Having ice in the copper pipe allows me to bend it around the flue here without getting any kinking in the copper. Here I'm just making some rings that I can weld onto the flue pipe to support the copper. Okay, so the first test is just the copper coil around the piece of flue pipe. The test is set up and all ready to go. All four variations will get the exact same setup and I'll just walk through it real quick. There's a thermocouple here so I can take temperature readings at the bottom of the coil and right after the coil to see how much heat I'm pulling out of the flue gases. There's a pump pushing the water through from the bottom to the top. I'm intentionally not using counter flow, which is more efficient, but it, and it would be pushing the water down, but eventually I wanna take the system fully off grid, so there would be no pump, and it would rely exclusively on a thermosiphon. So I wanna do all the testing with the water flowing in that same direction. Then the water comes back over here to the barrel that is insulated, and I've got thermometers, so I can take temperature readings of the water in the barrel, and I'll also be measuring the temperature of the water coming out of the hose. So now we're all set, and I'll get the fire going. So just to get it going, one minute in, we're at 315 degrees at the bottom, 270 at the top, and 48 degrees the water coming out of the hose. The test is timing how long it takes to heat 28 gallons of water from 46 degrees to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. I'll also be keeping track of how much wood I use and the flue gas temperatures so that I can compare those between the different tests. All right, we just hit 100 degrees or 38 C and that took forever. This thing is so much less efficient than the coil inside the flue pipe. The wood stove's pumping out the heat, but it just is not transferring to the water very fast. So hopefully one of the next variations is really gonna step up this efficiency. 
For the next test, I'm gonna wrap some ceramic wool insulation around the coil from top to bottom, and then I'll wrap the whole thing in some thin sheet steel just to protect it. And that should minimize the heat loss between the top and the bottom of the coil. Once it hits the single wall flue pipe, it'll lose a lot of heat, but hopefully keeping the heat in here will increase the efficiency. I think it'll help, but I don't expect it to help massively, maybe 10 or 15%, maybe even 20, but like not a huge gain. The first thing I'll do is just get the sheet steel wrapped up into a cylinder so that I can drop it on once I get the ceramic wool in place. And I'll make some hose clamps to the right size so that I can cinch it up and keep it all in place. All right, test number two, ready to go. Everything in the setup is the same. The water's starting at one degree warmer and the air temp is a little bit different, but I'll put all of that in the data. So let's get it going. Okay, 20 minutes in and we've settled into a nice stable burn and I can already tell that this is warming up a lot faster than the uninsulated coil. It's still nothing like the coil on the inside, but it is, an improvement over the last one. Okay, two tests down, and to be honest, I'm not impressed by either method. I was actually pretty surprised by how little the insulation did. Now with the benefit of hindsight and being able to think about it for a bit, it actually does kind of make sense. The coil in both of these tests was not very hot. So there's a pretty small temperature differential between the coil and the air. So I'm not actually gonna be losing very much heat out of the coil itself. And because the copper is wound quite tightly, and there aren't really gaps in between each coil, most of the heat that's coming off of the flue pipe is going to be absorbed by the copper. The flue pipe itself is quite hot and I can actually see the air shimmering around it. So I'm losing a ton of heat, but that makes sense. It's just not going into the copper and then back out again. I haven't had a chance to crunch the numbers yet, but I think the gain is gonna be so small, maybe like 5% somewhere in there, that like it's probably just not actually worth insulating a coil like this. All right, now on to test number three. This one was mentioned a lot in the comments, so I definitely wanted to try it, but I do have some reservations and I'll go over the whole thing now. First, I'll remove this outer shroud and the insulation. Then I'll make another shroud that's really tight fitting around the outside of the copper coil so that I can slip that down over it and the copper will be trapped between that and then the inner flue. Then I'm gonna pour in dry sand and fill the cavity so around all the copper pipes, it'll just be filled with sand. Nobody really mentioned insulating the whole thing, but I have this set up and I think it's probably worth just throwing it on there. So after I get the first shroud on, then I'll put this insulation and this outer shroud back on around the whole thing. I'm really not sure how this test is gonna pan out, but I do think one thing working against it is that the sand itself is a thermal mass and I think it might take a really long time to heat up and be actually stealing heat that the water would otherwise be carrying away. And so the water's a thermal mass and the sand is a thermal mass and they're both gonna be competing to take as much heat as they can. Now after a while, once the sand really comes up to temperature, then it might actually start assisting because now the copper is gonna be heated from all sides. But I think what this will show is that this solution is better for maintaining a hot water tank, but it is gonna be less good for a system where you want to make hot water quickly. So now I'll just mod this and get to the third test. So I think that'll fit well. I'll go ahead and weld up this seam and cut the hole for the bottom. I'll paint the inside with high temp paint so that the copper is not actually touching steel and then with the blowtorch I'm going to heat the whole thing just to cure the paint. And I'll just make sure it's really well sealed up so that no sand can leak through and escape. 
Right, so this is ready to fill with sand now. And as I fill it, I need to make sure that it's really well compacted all the way to the bottom with getting rid of any air gaps. So in order to do that, it's gonna need a lot of shaking. So I'm gonna use these scraps here just to throw together a quick system that's just gonna shake it as I add the sand to it. I'll weld some beads onto opposing sides of this rod just so that they protrude and as I spin it with the drill, it'll bounce the board sitting up above it. Right, so that's really full of sand and it's ready to go. Now I went back and forth on whether or not to insulate this. You don't hear a lot of people talking about insulating the sand, they just use the sand. But because I wanna be able to compare this to the fourth version of the test, I want that comparison to be as fair as possible and I'm going to insulate the fourth one, so I'm just gonna go ahead and insulate this also. So I'll just throw that same insulation and shroud back on and then it's out to test three. Looks like the water's out to a much faster start already with this one. We're at 11 degrees in the barrel Celsius and 65 at the hose. And in both of the previous tests, it took about 35 minutes to get up to 65. And we're there in 10 minutes with this one. So that was great. That worked really well. The sand helped transfer a lot more energy to the water and just generally improved the whole thing. It worked better than I was expecting it to. Essentially, it's a thermal mass in itself. It is going to assist the heat transfer, but I thought it would be stealing quite a bit more. But it appears that it actually came up to temp quite quickly and then was just heating the water there from there on out. Again, I haven't crunched the numbers yet, but I think it was something like a 50% increase over the previous tests. So sand is definitely a good option. And that brings us to the fourth test. And I'm actually really excited about this one. I put a lot of thought into what material could go in there that would assist the heat transfer in the best way possible. And I did a lot of research into this. And this is something I've never seen or even heard of being done before. And the idea is graphite powder. Graphite powder is like the opposite of a thermal mass. It is not gonna hold very much of the heat in and of itself, but it's incredibly good at transferring heat. So it's gonna fill all the voids around the copper and the heat coming off the flue pipe is just gonna be able to go straight through the graphite powder right into the copper pipe. It's also incredibly non-reactive. So it's not gonna be interacting with the steel or the copper. It's fairly neutral. It's also gonna form a little barrier in between the copper and any exposed steel so it'll actually help reduce galvanic corrosion between those two metals. You can get it in a big variety of grain size, so this is really fine and it's just gonna fill in all the cracks really easily. Also, because of how non-reactive it is, you won't run the risk of having a thermitic reaction. One of the first ideas I had was filling it with aluminum powder. And while there are some traits that would make aluminum a, a really viable option, there are some, also some reasons not to use it and one incredibly dangerous reason that you definitely don't wanna use it for. So it has low thermal storage, just like graphite, and it transfers heat really well, just like graphite, but it also has a really low melting temperature. So if the temperatures in there got really high, you could run into issues. Graphite can withstand incredibly high temperatures, but then you could also have a thermitic reaction. So if you ever developed rust on the inside of this and the aluminum powder mixed with the rust, you could end up with an incredibly explosively powerful heat reaction inside of there. You do not want anything to do with that. So just as a warning, do not use aluminum powder in this kind of contraption. Now I need to get the sand out of here, which I think is gonna be a messy ordeal, but then it'll be pretty easy to get the graphite in and I'll be going for test number four. All right, test number four, ready to go. I've got high hopes for this one, so let's get it going. 
Okay, five minutes in and 65 at the hose. That's actually sounding pretty promising. All right, we're at 60 minutes and just for perspective, with the sand, it took us 80 minutes to get to this temperature and we just passed 60. And then with the original test, it took about 145 minutes to get to this point. Again, we're at 60 minutes. So this thing is so much faster. I think it's gonna be quite a bit slower than the coil in the flue, but it avoids a ton of problems that come along with that. And it's much safer overall. So I'll just hit 38 degrees, wind down the test, and then go crunch the data. All right, so that last test was awesome and it was a big improvement over the previous versions. While there's always room for improvement, I definitely wanna focus on this design. I think this is the right direction to be going. I've been able to go over the numbers and like always, I'll put all the data up over on Patreon for anyone who wants to really dive into it, but here are the headline numbers. All the tests heated 28 gallons from about 46 degrees to 100 degrees. The first test with just the coil took two hours and 32 minutes and used about 22 pounds of wood. This equates to about a 9% efficiency and it was a 1.4 kilowatt system. The second test with the insulation took two hours and 17 minutes, used just over 22 pounds of wood. It was also about a 9% efficiency and it was a 1.7 kilowatt system. The third test took about an hour and 23 minutes, used just under 19 pounds of wood. It was about a 10% efficiency and it was a 2.7 kilowatt system. So that was a big leap forward and it was about 1.8 times faster than the first test. And then the fourth test with the graphite took only an hour and four minutes and used about 13.1 pounds of wood. This is about a 15% efficiency and it was a 3.5 kilowatt system. So this is a huge gain over all of the other tests. It was 2.4 times faster than the first test and it was 23% faster than the sand. So while the sand is also a big upgrade, if you're going through the hassle of creating a system like this, you may as well fill it with graphite instead of sand and get that extra 23% gain. I'll also quickly compare the graphite version to the original tube test I did where the coil was inside the flue. The original test with the wood stove took 40 minutes, it was 33% efficient, and it was a 4.1 kilowatt system. And the test with the rocket stove only took 34 minutes, it was 30% efficient, and it was a 7.3 kilowatt system. So the tests with the coil inside the flue were a lot faster. They're about double the efficiency and they were a much higher power rating. But it also comes with a lot of drawbacks having the coil inside the flue. It's gonna condense a lot more creosote, which is a safety hazard for fires. It's gonna reduce efficiency over time as it builds up and cakes on the coil itself. And it's also acidic, which is gonna have long-term consequences on the metal on the inside. And with increased heat, there's a much greater likelihood of an overheating or an overpressure event. Also, any obstructions within the flue would almost never pass regs for a domestic setting. So while it's a much more efficient heat transfer system at first, once you factor in safety and cleaning and longevity, it just doesn't hold up to this system. The coil in the flue method might be good for an outdoor setup where safety isn't much of an issue and where you need water quickly and then you're not using it very regularly so it doesn't build up day by day. If you're using it a couple times a year, I think it would be fine for that. But if you want something that you're gonna use regularly, especially if it was inside of a dwelling, you don't want anything inside the flue. It's just too dangerous. And a design like this, it's gonna be easier to install and maintain and much safer in general. It will take a little bit longer to heat the water up, but if you're just maintaining a hot water tank, then you don't really need instant water and this would do fine. So for now, I'm gonna focus on designs in this direction. Just a few words on graphite for anyone who might look at doing this. I used about 2.2 pounds or one kilo of graphite to do this whole project. And graphite gets everywhere and it's a pain to clean. So use gloves, take it slow, try to contain the mess and it'll be a much nicer process. I'd love to hear any comments you have on the system or any ideas how to improve efficiency on this or even entirely different designs that I could build and test. I think this is a really good design, but there's always room for improvement or just to break the mold and try something entirely new. So for now, I'm just gonna permanently seal this up, give it a coat of paint, install it, and do a bunch more testing to see how it does in the long run. So let me know if there's any other projects you wanna see, but for now, I'm gonna call this one. Thanks for watching, and see you again soon.